like to call to order the 20th meeting of the 2013-2014 Common Council. Will the clerk please read the quote for the day? Thank you, Mayor. Courage is what it takes to stand up and speak. Courage is also what it takes to sit down and listen. Thank you. Will the clerk please call the roll for the meeting? Mark. <laughs> 15 present. Alderman Van Akron is excused. Today we have a young man, Ian Zempel, who's a member of Troop 859 from St. Dominic's working on his government badge. Ian's going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, so please stand and join him. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we'll move on to the approval of minutes from our last meeting, Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the minutes of the previous council meeting. Second. It's been moved and second to approve those minutes. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on the minutes? 15 ayes. Thank you. Next, we'll go on to resignations. City Attorney. Thank you, Your Honor. The uh, <clears throat> mayor received an email from Sheriff Paul Vang advising that he uh, needs to resign from the Senior, uh, senior, center, senior Activity Center Commission. Alderman Hammond. Um, move to accept the resignation. Second. The motion is before us. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll? Fifteen ayes. Next, we'll move on to council appointments. City Attorney. Uh, there's <coughs> correspondence from the mayor. Hereby submit the following appointments for your confirmation uh, to the Business Improvement District. David Gass, business owner. Tom Brickley, business owner. David Hanneman, property owner. David Sanderson, property owner. Whitney Viglietti, business owner. All appointed January 20th, 14, and terms expiring December 31, 2015. Signed by the mayor. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and place on file. Second. We have a motion to accept and place on file. I think we need a motion to suspend prior to that. Um, Make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, your yeah, motion, motion stands then. Motion to accept and file. Any discussion on that motion? City Attorney? Yeah, I think the proper motion would be to confirm the appointments. For Is that acceptable? Yes. Okay, that will be the motion on the floor. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? 15 ayes. City Attorney. Uh, <clears throat> Honorable members of the council, hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Aurora Vanilla to be considered for appointment to the Senior Activity Center Commission to fill the unexpired term of Sheriff Powell Vang, whose term expires 4-28-2014, signed by the mayor. And that will lie over. Next, we'll go on to public forum. City Clerk. Uh, yes, we have four this evening. Uh, first on the list is Colin Catchell. Colin, if you could come up, please. And Colin, can you give me your home address? Uh, 321 Bluff Avenue. Okay. And you will have five minutes, sir. Okay. I speak tonight on behalf of the Armory Foundation again. I know it might sound <clears throat> extreme, but there seems to be no doubt in our mind that the city's interest is possibly to never allow its citizens into the Armory again. I've been involved on the City Parks Board for the last four years, and normally what I see is the city working quickly to start development, not quickly to delay development. For some reason, the city is working at an overwhelming pace here to delay that development. Members of our foundation have been involved over nine years, and I personally spoke at the council meeting almost four years ago today exactly. This was when the state spaceport was renewing their lease. I spoke about the possibility of using the facility again for multiple purposes instead of a single purpose and was worried about the attention to the building's condition. The speaker after me was James Testaweed, who we respect for his vision. 
He stated that it was a godsend for Spaceport because the city had no takers and exhausted all its options and that he had personally repaired leaks in the roof. So now when a concerned and passionate group comes along, why is there a rush to ignore them? <coughs> the city's short-term thinking to save a mere $6,000 in heating costs seems to be more important than preserving an important piece of our city's future. This is not fiscally prudent. Our main concern is literally the survival of the armories, heating and plumbing, which, in, which is inside many of the concrete walls and cannot be completely drained out. When water freezes, it expands and splits everything apart in its path. There's no physical way to eliminate all the water in the armory structure. Much of it will be left in the system and irreversible damage could occur, giving the city an excuse to demo the building or sell it as real estate after October 14th. Any damage that may occur to the armory between now and the proposed time in October should be covered by the city because the amount of damage should be zero if they are going to operate in good faith. How will this affect the kids that live in the city right now? Everyone is a future. Why can't our youth be given the same opportunities and more than their ancestors? This is an ideological battle. There are those who believe that providing quality of life can only be accomplished by the private sector and those who believe that some things must be the responsibility of the city. We believe the quality of life in Sheboygan is in direct correlation to the use of the armory. We are offering the perfect private nonprofit partnership and eliminating the burden from the city. The motto of the state is, it's open for business. We are rushing to delay progress though. We know the city wants to move forward. We're all in this to win it. The city has spent enormous amounts of time and money figuring out how to retain its residents and keep our youth in the city. The Armory Foundation is offering one of the best ways to do that. We are ready to host two major kickoffs that are included in that packet that you have received. We would like to hit the ground running and make a positive influence on this city. Because of the overwhelming public support, the Armory Foundation is confident that this issue needs to be put on the ballot as a binding referendum in April, and if it was, we would have no chance of losing. We would like to avoid this route. Please listen to our proposal and call off the mothballing. You will not find a better alternative. We have the absolute best intentions. If we were to get in this building during the interim period, we could have the chance to prove our mission, to preserve, improve, and provide enjoyment to all the citizens and visitors of Sheboygan. This time when we could, is the time when we can get the most improvements done during the spring and summer months. We are aware of the roof, windows, and boiler, and many <coughs> other issues. These are minor, as the actual structure is in near perfect condition, as reported in 2003 by city inspectors. Most of the immediate issues are cosmetic. We have the volunteers, but not the access. The mayor stated to the press that the pipes would be drained and the facility mothballed. He also stated that he would meet with the Armory Foundation. We are asking that he chooses a second option first before possibly damaging what could be the most valuable building in Sheboygan. Please look here at the uh, original floor plan. I have a printout and you can see for yourself and ask, is there any possible place in the city that can provide this type of a venue? We can seat over 3,975 people for a concert, for an act. If there's a sporting event, we can seat 3,161. Um, to let this go to waste would be a complete, a complete travesty. And if you look at this and all the attention to detail and all of the events that we put in your packet, which are really only half of the events that even took place there, hopefully that would persuade you tonight in the closed session to vote with your hearts. Do not look at the costs in the immediate future as they are trivial and have been a part of the city budget for 72 years, but instead look forward 100 years from now and realize that the armory could still be providing enjoyment and a better quality of life for all the citizens and visitors of Sheboygan. With the help of the Armory Foundation, the so-called fiscal burden of the armory could be eliminated from the taxpayers. Only the Common Council has the power to make this decision, and your votes tonight will decide that. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. Next on our list is Tom Thompson. Is Tom here? Tom, if I could have your home address, please. Sure. 780 South Pier. Okay, you'll have five minutes. Greetings, council members, city officials, and Sheboygan residents. I would like to introduce myself and what my involvement is. My name is Tom Thompson, and I purchase a condominium and reside on South Pier. In eight years living in Sheboygan, I emphasize that my passion for Sheboygan and the county grows daily. In my duration living in Sheboygan, I have come to know numerous business owners, city officials, and citizens of the area. 
Having a second residence in Kenosha and working in Milwaukee, I have entertained or directed countless number of people to Sheboygan. <coughs> I could name numerous points of interest and attractions that make our city so unique and special, but I believe the people are the greatest asset we possess. I am presently an active volunteer, have been involved with community services, volunteered physical labor where needed. Um, I presently lead a technology rental company in Brookfield, Wisconsin. This prof profession has afforded me the pleasure and a high level of responsibility to work with Milwaukee Art Museum, Visit Milwaukee, GMR Marketing, Harley Davidson, and many others. I would like to impress upon you the passion I have for the Armory and uh, how I would contribute. I would assume a lead responsibility bringing events from the outside region. I've already received some very positive feedback if the facility is becomes community operational. I don't believe any one of the Armory Association members are getting ahead of where they are, but everyone has already received so much interest, positive feedback, and input. I have begun the process of finding volunteers and contractors willing to assist with repairs, upkeep, should the foundation be granted a lease. The Stephanie Weil Center and Bookworm Gardens have proved that there are so many skilled forces that are willing to preserve and donate services. I also believe the Sheboygan Armory Foundation can incorporate a large network of citizens volunteering to create a professional venue. That leads me to why I believe it is important to give the Armory Foundation an opportunity to succeed. In the <coughs> short time I was able to attend events at the Armory, they left me with long lasting memories. But even more important than the memories were the feelings and ambiance that the facility created. That feeling cannot be reproduced with infinite dollars or designing a new structure. If the Armory Association can implement its plan, I feel the entire city will benefit. The ultimate goal of the Sheboygan Armory Foundation is to give back to the citizens, create uplift to present business owners, and increase tourism. I strongly suggest if you haven't been to the Sheboygan Armory Facebook page, pay it a visit. You'll read about more events held there than maybe all the other facilities combined. I would like to state that meeting the nucleus of the association and founding members, they are dynamic people that accept nothing less than success. When they hear of heat costs, windows, or roof issues as possible obstacles, you'll never hear the word can't, but instead they will come up with viable solutions. I can assure you that there are no defeatists within the association and members, or I certainly would not be involved with this. I also believe the youth of Sheboygan are a special breed and will cherish this venue and carry on the tradition with the same hard work and dedication as the people that grew up attending these events. In closing, I believe the risk versus reward factor has an unlimited upside with minimal downside if everyone works together. Please give serious consideration to the mission of the Sheboygan Armory Foundation. I also would like to thank everybody here for their contribution, for their hard work in making Sheboygan what it is today. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Tom. Uh, next would be Kirk O'Bear. Kirk, can I have your home address, please? 735 Fairway Drive. And you will have five minutes, sir. I don't need five minutes. I just wanted to give everybody an update on the activities of mm -hmm. the Armory Foundation and where we stand. We're uh, almost completed with our process of incorporating as a 501c3 organization. I also want to let you know that I get probably 10 phone calls a day from people that are interested in either volunteering, helping, or lending their expertise to this multicultural, multi-generational asset that we have. Um, if you look at the foundation website, um, which we've, we've been putting together the history of this uh, tremendous facility, you'd be shocked to see what's gone on in this place. We've seen the Tommy Dorsey Orchestra, Johnny Carson broadcast live from the Armory, the Harlem Globetrotters, of course, uh, did their first uh, spring training ever at this facility. Johnny Cash played, Richard Nixon spoke at this facility. This is a place that uh, by its very nature has supported the city culture and is a, a tremendous resource that we have. What we want to do is uh, encourage the Common Council to consider a, a very simple proposition and that is that before we let this building waste, in other words, uh, before we let it damage itself by turning off the heat, letting the pipes freeze. Um, if the Armory Foundation will be granted the privilege of doing some fundraising and having access to the building to, to accomplish that, I see it as a perfect win-win scenario. Um, 
I've been gathering all of the names and uh, addresses and numbers of people that want to contribute in some way. We've got architects, engineers, construction people, historians. Uh, and I'm, I'm not just talking even about Sheboygan. I'm getting calls from Milwaukee and other parts of uh, the state as well. Uh, people are interested. Just today I got a, a phone call from WTMJ and also a, a TV station in Milwaukee that wants to uh, be more familiar with our plan and what's going on. So for what it's worth, uh, I only say this to encourage the Common Council to understand that this is a movement that has some legs and we're really not asking for that much, just some dialogue, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Kirk. And last on the list would be Mike Burnett. <coughs> Mike, can I have your home address, please? Yep, 1925 South 26th Street, and hopefully I'm even quicker. But everybody said pretty much everything that we needed to say, I think. Um, we're really worried about tonight's vote, even though it might seem minor to all of you, and it's just putting it off. But we're worried that if we don't have, we won't have the ability to do the fundraising that we're planning. One of the events we have, have under wraps that we've been working on is there, there's several hundred top hit songs that were played at the Armory through the years, and we've been working with a music promoter to try to get people come in and do a cover band concert at the Armory in conjunction with an all-star basketball game of, cur of not current, but recently graduated South, North, Lutheran players coming in coached by some old legends. Talking to people at the Y, there's extreme interest. Talking to younger people, extreme interest. Everybody, it's been great. We're very excited about it, but we just want to have the chance. <coughs> I mean, the other day I'm at the Y and I asked uh, Wally Recolitis, who a lot of you probably know, mostly known as a bowler, but I said, hey Wally, you got any good memories of the Armory? And he goes, good memories, great memories. Unfortunately, we don't have the money to keep the place open. And I'm kind of like, what do you mean, Wally? I go, that's donut money. I mean, we're talking keeping the heat on. And it's like maybe $30,000 a year or so utilities, and that might be a little high. And I'm going with a crap number from about a dozen years ago, but it's a young Dave Beeble stating 15000 for utilities. And it's kind of like, I know that's not the same as it is now. It's changed. But we don't really have a real number to go on. You know, so we're saying 30. But... But w Wally then went on to tell me, you know, I, I mean, after I said, come on, dumping 32 points against North, that had to be pretty cool. He goes, yeah, that was cool. But what you don't know is I actually played for the Redskins their last season. And it's like they weren't pro the last season, but they went undefeated, and then they got kicked out of the league. And it's like and it was just an oddness. But the support from everybody at the Y was so huge and in that locker room of people just rattling off events and excited and they're all like oh we're way behind it and we've had such overwhelming support right now that we can't really believe it and we haven't really even done anything yet and that's that's all i got thanks thank you mike that would be it for this evening thank you everyone for your comments next i'd like to ask mark mcdonald to join me at the podium Mark is retiring from his work with the city. He started working with the Department of Public Works in 1980 as Labor One. In uh, 1987, he became a truck driver. In 1999, a truck mechanic. And in 2012, the cemetery caretaker until his retirement on January 3rd of 2014. I've got a little uh, certificate of appreciation for Mark. The city of Sheboygan is honored to present Mark McDonald the certificate of appreciation and recognition of his 33 years of dedicated service to the city of Sheboygan. Mark, thank you very much. One other announcement as we're looking forward to the election season this year, we're going to have a spring primary for one um, 
most people are looking forward most to. Most of us. <laughs> uh, to, for the, um, the supervisor race on, uh, in the, the second district of the city, these three wards, uh, rather than having uh, a large expense uh, for what is usually a small turnout, the clerk has decided that these three wards will be combined and they will all be voting at the first congregational church on Bluff Avenue. Now this is just for the primary and mailings will be sent to all the households in those three districts. That's district two, three, and 12. Wards two, three, and 12. Wards two, three, and 12, excuse me. Okay, next we'll move on to hearings. Um, item 2.1 is a hearing uh, to establish the use district classification of recently annexed property located on the southwest corner of North 36th Street and Wilgus Avenue as a class SC suburban commercial classification. Is anyone here to address that, that item? Is anyone here to be heard on that item? Is anyone here to be heard on that item? Don Hammond, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to close the hearing. Second. It's been moved and seconded to close the hearing. Uh, I'll, the clerk, please call the roll. 15 ayes. And item 2.2, another hearing was withdrawn. And uh, in the consent agenda, the corresponding uh, item in there, 3.6, will lie over. Don Hammond, for the consent agenda. Thank you. I move to accept and file all, all our O's, accept and adopt all our C's, and put all resolutions upon and ordinances upon their passage. Second. Thank you for that motion. Is there any discussion on any items in the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll on the consent agenda? 15 ayes. Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to communications and petitions. Item 4.1 will be referred to the Public Protection and Safety Committee under reports of officers. Item 5.1 will lie over till March 3rd. And items 5.2 through 5.7 will be referred to various committees. <coughs> under resolutions, we have uh, resolution 6.1 which is by Alderperson <laughs> Hammond authorizing combining the city wards of 2, 3, and 12 for the upcoming primary election on February 18th of 2014. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. We moved and seconded to approve resolution 6.1. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? 15 ayes. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is a resolution by Alderperson Hamburn, Vanderweel, Heidemann, Donahue, and Carlson approving the fiscal year 2014 one-year annual action plan for the Community Development, Development Black, Black Grant Program submission. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. Any objection to suspension? You want to call for a vote? It's fine. Okay. See no uh, objections, please proceed. Thank you. Um, I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I think I read in the, uh, in the document that we're not sure exactly the amount of money we're gonna be having for these organizations. Are, will, is this, will this possibly have to be readjusted later then? Because I know we had it laid out exactly what organization was getting what? Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, um, we have an estimate. We base our, uh, the plan's gotta be to the, um, to the appropriate parties by February 1st, so we base our, our, our um, estimates off of what we received last year. Um, and then if, when we get the money or we get the allocation, then if we have to adjust because it's been decreased or increased, um, we adjust from there. It's been common practice. We've had to do this several years where we get a less, lesser amount, we readjust and then have to bring it back to council for approval. Thank you for that explanation. Any other discussion? Would the clerk please call the roll? A delay. 14 ayes and one abstention. Motion passes. 
Item 6.3 through 6.6 .6 will be referred to um, all to public works. Moving on to reports of committees. Item 7.1 is an RC by law and licensing recommending that the beverage operator's license 0237 be denied based upon her failure to accurately reveal all the convictions on her beverage operator's license application and her record of violations related to the license activity. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you. Move the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. That motion is on the floor under discussion. Is Cassandra Mewes here this evening? She's not here. Um, based on her on the police recommendation, uh, they negatively they neg gave us a negative recommendation um, to deny the license. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll on 7.1? Fifteen ayes. Motion passes. Item 7.2 is an RC by Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee authorizing taking the appropriate steps to seek um, to participate as a signatory to the Green Tier Charter Legacy Communities and recommends that the substitute resolution be passed. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt and put the substitute resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The motion's before us. Is there any discussion? Uh, Alderman Hammond. Um, just for the record, uh, we, we um, the lady from the DNR came in and talked to us um, on this um, at the Sustainable Task Force, and um, many of the fears that some of us had about this being kind of a mandate from the DNR down to municipalities, if we signed up for that, were, were put at ease. It's very much a voluntary program. We can pick the things that we think will benefit the community and ignore the things that you know, may not have as much of an impact here. So. I think it's a, an opportunity for us to get involved with other communities and start to develop some best practices for sustainability going forward. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fifteen ayes. Motion passes. Item 7.3 is an RC by salary and grievances recommending amending section 29-75 of the 1975 Municipal Code is to add, change, delete various positions in the table of organizations and pass the attached substitute ordinance which includes the change job description for, for the fire chief. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, uh, Mayor. I would uh, move that we accept, adopt, and uh, put the substitute ordinance on its passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded to put the motion on the floor. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on 7.3. 15 ayes. Motion passes. Next is ordinances. Uh, item 8.1 will lie over. Items 8.2 and 8.3 will be referred to the City Planning Commission. Under matters laid over, uh, city attorney. Do no, I should take that. Okay, 9.1 is an RO by number of number 197 of 1314 by the City Planning Commission recommending establishing the use district classification uh, recently annexed property owned by DHP LLC at the southwest corner of North 36th Street and Wilgus Avenue to SC Suburban Commercial. Alderman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to accept and file and pass the ordinance. Okay. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk calls the, call the roll, please? 15 ayes. Item 9.2 is RO number 1, excuse me, 216 of 1314 by the Director of Planning and Development recommending filing a communication from the Office Service Company, LLC, in regards to their request and purchasing an additional 3.7 acre parcel of land in the Sheboygan Business Center for future building expansion. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll? 15 ayes. Motion passes. Next is item 
9.3, which is an RO 217 of 1314 by the Director of Planning and Development requesting accepting $117,000 in sponsorship contribution towards the 2014, 15, and 16 City Independence Celebration from Johnsonville Sausage. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, move to an accept and adopt. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just real quickly, I'd like to thank Johnsonville Sausage for their generous donation. They've been a great partner in our Ind Independence Day celebrations for uh, many, many years, certainly as long as I've been here, and we look forward to, to working with them in the future. So again, thank you to Johnsonville. Thank you for your comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fifteen ayes. Motion passes. Next is item 9.4, which is resolution number 120 of 1314 by Alderman Hammond authorizing the sale of approximately 3.7 acres of land in the Sheboygan Business Center to the Office Service Company. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Again, I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion? Seeing no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll? Fifteen ayes. Motion passes. Other matters? Steve McLean, City Attorney. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, <clears throat> Ten point nine is an RO by the City Clerk submitting communication from Meals on Wheels asking to purchase a piece of land immediately north of the property they purchased last year. That be referred to law and licensing. Ten point ten is an RO by the City Clerk submitting communication from George Longo requesting that bus route number five return back to its previous scheduled route. Which item is that? 10.10 10.10 would be going to transit. That'll go to transit. Yep. And 10.9 is finance. And then we have 10.1. Two packets, Steve. Yeah, 10.1 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2014 and June 30, 2015. That'll go to law and licensing. 10.2 is a communication from Asher Hyreman stating his concerns regarding Dave's who's in. Law and licensing. 10.3 is an RO by the city clerk submitting an application from American Orthodontics requesting a zoning change for property located at 1712 North 17th Street from NR6 neighborhood residential to UC Urban Commercial Classification. And that'll go to the City Planning Commission. 10.4 is an ordinance amending the Sheboygan official zoning map of the Sheboygan zoning ordinance to change the Eustistic classification of property located at 12, 1712 North 17th Street. Go to City Planning Commission. 10.5, submitting an application from American Orthodontics requesting a zoning change for property located at 10 excuse me, at 1704 North 17th Street from Neighborhood Residential to UC Urban Commercial. City Planning Commission. 10.6 is the ordinance amending the Sheboygan official zoning map of the Sheboygan zoning ordinance to change that use district classification property located at 1704 North 17th Street. Again, to City Planning Commission. 10.7 is an application from American Orthodontics requesting a zoning change for property located at 1714 Cambridge Avenue from UI Urban Industrial to UC Urban Commercial. And I'll also go to City Planning Commission. 10.8 is the ordinance amending the Sheboygan official zoning map of the Sheboygan zoning ordinance to change the use district classification of the property located at 1714 Cambridge Avenue. And also to City Planning Commission. And then just to review, 10.9 went to finance and 10.1 uh, will go to transit. Next is a motion to go into closed session. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to convene into closed session under the exemption contained in section 19851E, Wisconsin statutes where competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session for the purpose of deliberating regarding long-term strategy regarding city-owned property known as the Armory. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Will the clerk calls, call the roll on a closed session? Jim. 
No, that's okay. 15 eyes. We'll take a five minute recess and reconvene. Okay, we'll reconvene in open session. We have item 12.1, which is a resolution by all the persons Hammond, Carlson, Heidemann, and Vanderweel and Donahue authorizing the purchasing agent to prepare and issue a request for proposals for the adaptive reuse and or redevelopment of the former armory at 516 Broughton Drive. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderman Hammond. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I know there's been some interest in whether or not we are going to mothball the facility. Um, and I just want to let um, those out there that are concerned about that, that this will be taken up at Public Works. Our Public Works Department is looking, um, uh, working with professionals to determine the viability and any potential damage that could occur from mothballing the facility. And those recommendations will be taken up at Public Works. Um, and from there, a decision will be made about mothballing. It is not our intent to do anything that would damage that facility. Um, so we're going to bring in some experts to, to take a look and make sure that it wouldn't. Thank you. Thank you for that comment. Any other further discussion on the motion? Did we get a motion to pass the resolution? Okay. Okay, if there's no other discussion, will the clerk please call the roll? Fifteen ayes. Motion passes. Item Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion. The clerk call the roll on adjournment. I will. <laughs> Come on, who did it? Fourteen ayes. One abstention. We stand adjourned. Thank you very much for your attendance this evening. Yep.